Elon Musk has rather destroyed Elizabeth Warren in a slight Twitter spat. I'm going to go through what happened between Elon Musk and Elizabeth Warren and why it is that I believe Elon Musk was ultimately correct here. Now, my name is Mark. Welcome back to the channel. If you have any thoughts about the ongoings between Elon Musk and Elizabeth Warren and broadly Elon Musk's financial situation, I would be interested to hear that in the comments below. Okay, so let's have a look at what happened in this Twitter spat, this drama between two heavyweights on Twitter. So here we have Elizabeth Warren's Twitter feed, and we can go through the various tweets and the back and forth that has occurred. Now, Elizabeth Warren starts this by asserting, let's change the rigged tax code so the person of the year will actually pay taxes and stop freeloading off everyone else. That's what starts it. Now, there are two underlying complaints she's made here. One, he doesn't pay taxes. Two, he's freeloading. Presumably, that is a reference to uh, him getting government loans and incentives and the like. I'll come back to both of those and explain why she is wrong about both of those assertions and the assertion he doesn't pay taxes or that he is freeloading. Both of those are factually incorrect, and I'll come back to why in a second. Elon Musk, of course, then responds. Before we do look at his response, though, let's note how many likes she got for hers. 53,000. 300. Now, that's at the time of recording. It could obviously change. Now, Twitter likes are not in any way evidence of whether someone is correct, whether the argument makes sense, or anything else really. It is a gauge of public sentiment and a particularly narrow slice of public sentiment. Twitter is widely regarded as very left-leaning. So a leftist like Elizabeth Warren or AOC or Bernie Sanders would do very well on Twitter in general terms. Elizabeth Warren makes good use of Twitter. It's kind of a home environment for her where a leftist is going to do quite well. So bear that one in mind. It doesn't show who's correct. It just shows public sentiment. Now let's have a look at how Elon Musk responded. And there's really a couple of streams of responses here. The first stream of responses is when he says, stop projecting, and then deviates from the topic by linking to an article pertaining to her claims of Native American heritage. It appears that those claims were not well grounded. However, it is rather beside the point. Nevertheless, that's what he starts with. I think that is a relatively weak start because it doesn't really address anything. But this got 75,000 likes. This does show us the extent to which there's a degree of antipathy toward Elizabeth Warren. Because clearly this is not really addressing the point, but nevertheless is an interesting curiosity. The other comments, however, are more pertinent. He then states, You remind me of when I was a kid, and my friend's angry mom would just randomly yell at people for no reason. That I actually have a degree of sympathy for. She does actually remind me of that type of person that is perpetually scolding people like Elon Musk for, in this case, quite disingenuous things. I Things that are just factually wrong. And I agree with him that she is yelling at him for no reason, other than to engage in political point scoring. He then finishes this particular stream with, Please don't call the manager on me, Senator Karen, praying emoji. 144,000 likes. Almost triple the number of likes as her original tweet. Bear in mind, this is A, a reply, and B, a reply against a left-leaning senator on Twitter in notoriously left-leaning website and interface. This is telling. It tells the degree of antipathy toward Elizabeth Warren that is out there. The only other response we'll go through in relation to this is from the Twitter handle Shibatoshi Nakamoto. This is the founder of Dogecoin. And then he says, I'm pretty sure politicians want all the innovators to move somewhere else so America can just be the land of handouts and debt without actually creating anything. Now, this is a fair point that I will come back to. This is more pertaining to the incentives and loans given to Tesla and other like tech companies in order to go out and innovate. This is relevant, but is more relevant to the factual basis of her tweet than anything else. He does, however, have a fair point here in that he has a fair point that he's decrying the high level of taxes in many states in the US, particularly California, but also in general terms, the sentiment amongst some politicians 
to simply go out and tax anyone to a large extent that has been successful or that has worked hard. So that's the first stream of responses. There is, however, a second stream that I will go over that at least partially addresses what Elizabeth Warren has claimed. In this second stream, Elon Musk states, and if you opened your eyes for two seconds, you would realize I pay more taxes than any American in history this year. 123,000 likes. He is correct. He pays a ton of taxes, billions of dollars of taxes. These taxes are based on various sources of income he's gotten. There is a looming $15 billion or so tax bill that he has. So huge amounts of tax. Note in her first tweet, in her tweet, she specifically said, so the person of the year will actually pay taxes. She's factually wrong. He does. She is simply incorrect. There's no other way of putting it. So that was his first response in this stream. The second response that he does is, don't spend it all at once. Oh, wait, you did already. This is getting at the idea that Democrats, and Elizabeth Warren in particular, want to spend profligately. Some Democrats, for example, Joe Manchin, are trying to resist that. However, he's getting at the idea that there is a large amount of expenditure and certain quarters of the government want to engage in a tax and spend type approach rather than a fiscally responsible one. Again, Shibatoshi Nakamoto responds, I kind of really don't like Elizabeth Warren. And this is getting at, to a large extent, a lot of the antipathy, antipathy toward Elizabeth Warren that is out there. This, I think, is obvious from the sheer number of likes Elon Musk has gotten. So 115,000 here, 123,000 here, tells us that across all of these tweets, all five of them is ratioed Elizabeth Warren. All five of them. Every single one of those responses has done better than Elizabeth Warren on a left-leaning platform where a left-leaning senator who is good at social media has tweeted. He has effectively demolished her with the responses, at least in the public sentiment angle. That's not to say that no one is agreeing with Elizabeth Warren. It's just that more people are agreeing with Elon Musk. So I think that is telling, at least as it pertains to electoral decision making and what people would be thinking of doing come election time. So that's what Elon Musk has said. And perhaps the best summary of all of this was by a Twitter user named Jordan Chamberlain, who said, it's amazing that Elon Musk owns Tesla. SpaceX, Neuralink, The Boring Company, and Elizabeth Warren, which I think is rather an accurate summary of what happened here. So with that back and forth in mind, we can think a little bit about, is Elon Musk correct? Is Elizabeth Warren correct? Is there perhaps an in-between of some kind? Well, I'm only going to address that at a high level in this video. Perhaps if you want me to do a deeper dive into how much tax he pays, and into all of the incentives Tesla has gotten from the government, let me know that in the comments below. But I'll address that at a very high level, because there's going to be sufficient to simply rebut her comments here, rather than go into all of the minute of this. Firstly, does he pay taxes? Yes, he's correct. He stated so in Twitter, it's absolutely correct. There is nothing that is in dispute about that. He has a looming tax bill. He has been paying billions of dollars in taxes. He is correct that he's paying the most taxes of any American in history. So literally she is wrong. The problem with the tax the rich comments that often arise is a lot of these rich people simply hold assets and have held them for a very long time. And those have gone up in value. They're not earning income from them. They are perhaps asset rich and cash poor. Someone like Elon Musk maybe doesn't generate the most income, but because Tesla has done particularly well because he created value, then he is paying taxes. Now, the question, of course, is, should there be a tax on his wealth? I've already asserted in other videos that I absolutely disagree with there being a wealth tax. There is obviously a floodgates argument that if you start taxing billionaires, then 100 millionaires, then 10 millionaires, then millionaires, then anyone can be taxed on any asset they hold. So that's the first thing. There's no limiting principle, which makes it incredibly dangerous. The second thing that notwithstanding is it is bad policy. It is bad policy because it would disincentivize someone like Elon Musk to go out and create value. Why would you go out and create value on Tesla if you're just going to lose a lot of in, in tax? You're just going to 
live the quiet life. Of course, after a point in time, what's the point if you're just going to be using it in a lot of tax? So it is disincentivizing value creation. That's why many other governments have realized it's important to have tax incentives to invest in innovative companies. So it is bad policy in terms of incentivizing people. It's also bad policy in terms of the mechanism of action. They'll be taxing you on capital on not capital gains because capital gains would imply you sold it. They'll be taxing you on the value going up. But do you get taxed back if the value goes down? Will the government refund you if your portfolio decreases in value? Say there's a recession, do you get all of that money back? So for example, in the financial crisis, stock prices were high and then plummeted like 50%. Do you get 50% back? Is the government going to pay you when there's a downturn? It's incredibly stupid. A policy of taxing wealth is so utterly asinine that it makes no sense in practical terms. Then you have the normative issue. The normative issue is that it is inherently repugnant to simply tax the wealth that someone holds. You're taxing assets for their existence. They've already been taxed on their income. And now they're being double taxed. It's double dipping by the government because the government can't get its house in order in terms of expenditure because they keep doing profligate spending like build back better. So the policy is a shambles, a complete schmozzle. Thankfully, it is being rejected in Congress. The next issue is, is he a freeloader? The answer to this is no. The government has provided incentives and loans to Tesla. The government did this because the government wanted to achieve a policy purpose. The government wanted a policy purpose of EVs. The government seemed to decide that it wanted uh, a private sector company to do this, EV, solar, uh, space travel, in part because this saves the government money. Having SpaceX do space travel saves the money on NASA. Having Tesla do EVs means that the EVs are developed. If Tesla didn't do EVs, then either someone else would have to, but there would need to be incentives for them, or the government would need to try to. The reason incentives are absolutely necessary is the huge amount of risk involved. Because Elon Musk would have been forgoing a lot of other profitable opportunities, and he would have to have taken significant personal sacrifices in the beginning to get Tesla off the ground. Without the incentives and the loans, it simply wouldn't have happened. The private sector also wouldn't have loaned for this because of the sheer amount of risk involved. So they were effectively filling a capital gap here. The government achieved something from this. The government got a policy goal from providing this money. The government was not giving the money away. The government got a policy outcome that it wanted to pursue. If the government didn't do this, the government wouldn't have gotten the policy that it wanted. So it is as simple as that. It was a payment for a policy outcome. The government could, in theory, try to do this themselves. The reason the government would fail at this, though, is incentives. For something like this to get off the ground, there need to be adequate incentives, i.e. the individuals involved need to get a payoff for taking the risk and doing the time involved. If there aren't incentives and governments don't provide bonuses necessary to get this off the ground, then people simply won't work hard because there is no compensation delta nor compensation vega, to use a more technical term. So it was absolutely necessary to get the private sector involved here because government doesn't do a particularly good job running private corporations. Hence why the government got a policy outcome, potentially for cheap, by getting Tesla involved. It was win-win for both parties. The assertion that he is freeloading on the government is factually wrong. It ignores the policy purpose behind the government money and what the government got out of it. And it was effectively a payment for service, really, in essence. So that's why Elizabeth Warren is incorrect, why Elon Musk owned Elizabeth Warren, and why that was quite accurate. Why Elon Musk, I think his response here made sense, and is why he got much more traction, because he was simply correct. So those are my thoughts on it. If you have any thoughts about whether Elon Musk or Elizabeth Warren is correct, I would be interested to hear those in the comments below. Otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. And if you're looking to support the channel and or learn something about finance, do go check out my investment academy, where in lieu of something like a Patreon, I'm providing access to various courses and financial resources so that you can improve your investment, improve your financial acumen, improve your interactions with the financial markets, while also supporting this channel. So do go check that out. Hopefully it is useful to you. I'll include a link in the description below in case you are interested in doing so. 
And otherwise, I do very much hope to see you for future videos as well.